Hi, I'm Terry Knight. Welcome to Garden Bite. I have been producing a radio garden show daily since 2007, and I had a show called Dig in Minnesota in 2013. I have been also blogging everything on my website, gardenbite.com. I started these YouTube videos last season, and today I'm very excited because I am bringing in my friend and certified arborist, Faith Applequist of Tree Quality, to talk to me about some of the things that are going on in my yard that will likely be going on in your yard at some time as well. We're gonna talk about maple trees and a century oak, a crab apple, and some winter damage that has been going on as well. That's all coming up next. Hi, back with Faith Applequist, my friend and certified tree arborist. This is, that's probably redundant, isn't it? It's a okay. tree arborist. It can be certified arborist. <laughs> How about right. that? Yeah. She is uh, the owner of Tree Quality, and I brought her in to uh, help me out with several different things. Now, we're going to start with this maple tree, okay. and I had told you that um, I thought it looked pretty decent, but you pointed out a couple of other things that I'm concerned about the life of this tree. Right, so this is a sugar maple. Mm -hmm. um, and what I've noticed of the tree is that um, we have a defect in the stem here. You can see that there's um, uh, a decay cavity. Mm -hmm. And we've got some good wound wood response around the perimeter of the decay. But why did this happen to this tree? Um, one of the reasons that these trees have these um, splits and cavities that look like this, almost looks like a frost crack that has decay, maybe the sun got it, but in this case I don't think so. I thought it would, might be lightning. It could, it looks maybe like lightning, but okay. it's not lightning. Okay. Um, and that's a common, uh, a common uh, way to think about like mm -hmm. long defects like this. But what I think is going on is the root system. And this tree was probably planted too deep. And you can see that the root flare is not visible here. It goes oh, right sure. into the ground right here. It oh, kind of yeah. looks like a foam pole. Mm -hmm. And we really want to see a big, huge, fat root here, like we're seeing a root over here. And we see compression over here in the stem, and the stem is warped. So the tree is going into the ground abnormally, and the roots then are circling the stem. And as they circle the stem, they compress the wood, and then it creates this defect like this. So as the tree gets older, the roots get bigger, and this defect will get worse. So if there's an opportunity to do something else with this space, I wouldn't feel bad if this tree went away. It's not a healthy, perfect specimen. Okay, so I'm going to tell you I'm kind of excited to hear that. Actually, because uh, I have the opportunity, as I said, to get a green garden put in. Now, um, we'll talk about that on a whole other episode. But right now, Faith and I are going to get over to another maple tree. All right, so we've moved over to another maple tree, which I didn't think had any issues. <laughs> and then I find out it actually does. And I'm going to turn this over to Faith to tell me what's going on here and why it's important to do some of the cleaning. Thanks, Terry. Well, when we're when we're looking at a tree like this, this is a boulevard tree, so it's probably pruned by the city, and they've obviously tagged it with the tag to identify the tree. But this is a red maple. This is our um, straight Acer rubrum, which is a, a nice native tree. You can see at the base we have a good. Um, Flare, unlike the previous tree, and again, I didn't mention that um, maples do form stem growing roots a lot, but this maple has a nice good root flare, so there's nothing yes. wrong with the roots. And then you can see that the that the trunk looks good, and there's no splits in the trunk, so that's good. So today it's just about pruning this tree. Now I'm five feet tall, and we really want to have the first um, mature or permanent canopy greater than my height. It's usually about eight feet up, so I would say the permanent canopy should be up here, these two branches, or leaders up here. And then anything below that should be temporary and be removed over time. But now 
Now these are getting pretty big, so it really the, the city, which I know they're busy, should have come off and taken these low branches off earlier so we make a small pruning cut. The idea is to make the smallest pruning cut as possible with the time that we have. Raise the canopy up. And a low canopy like this interferes with, you know, vehicle traffic and foot traffic. You can see that it's been pruned a lot. Clearance out of people's way, mowing. Yeah, so my this, husband mowing. <laughs> yeah, so you can see that this branch is really in the way. Um, if you look closely over here, you can see that this area that's punched out, this is called the branch bark ridge. And um, this is the branch collar that goes underneath. When you're done pruning, all of this should be intact. You should have this piece and the, the bottom piece. You can see clearly that this is stem tissue from yeah. here on, and this is branch tissue from here on, and we really need to make that cut exactly at the interface between the stem tissue and branch tissue. So what the concept is, is that wound healing tissue are in this interface right here. And if we cut into the stem tissue, there's no wound healing or cells that will close this wound. You can see that this wound is closed here, yes. and that's our goal in any tree pruning, is to have the tree close its own wounds. Mm -hmm. But if we don't cut at the right way, making it a nice 45 degree angle and maintaining the branch collar and the branch bark ridge, we get into a place where the tree can't close that wound. And it becomes open, and when it's open, it becomes decayed. All right. There we go. Well, we're going to, unless you have anything no, else that's to say, it. Yep. we're actually going to move on to a crab apple tree. I'm back to talk with Faith Applequist of Tree Quality about a crab apple that I have. Now, my thought was that I just mm. need to do some pruning at the top or something like that. Well, Faith actually knows a little bit more about it, and she's going to share with us some ideas she has this is a Royal Raindrops crab apple I planted about five years ago. So what do you think? What do you think yeah. needs to be done here? Okay, great. Thanks, Terry. Mm -hmm. Well, Royal Raindrops crab apple is one of my favorite crab apples. It's one of the trees, one of the few crab apple trees that does not get apple scab. Um, and apple scab is one of those um, infections that affect the leaves and creates them to fall off maybe around July and then you have kind of a tree that doesn't have any leaves on it. But this is not one of them. So this is a really good selection if you want to get a, a crab apple tree. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we're looking at to have a good form of a tree. We want a main dominant leader. And so we have that. Here's our leader right here. It's going up to the top. Um, and we've got good lateral branches. Again, these lateral branches will be too low to keep permanently in the canopy. Mm -hmm. So eventually we want to raise the canopy probably till up here and maybe as it grows maybe a little bit higher okay so again all of the branches that are from here and below will be temporary mm -hmm. and a good interval is pruning about every two years so when you when you plant a new tree mm -hmm. every two years you should have an isa certified arborist out to prune your tree every two years for 15 years and you'll never need to prune a tree more than this this tool right here, you right. never need a chainsaw, and you'll have small little pruning cuts that heal right away. Um, so this is a pretty lightweight branch. Mm -hmm. If it was heavy, we'd make a three-point cut, and maybe I'll do a three-point cut just to show you what that looks like. Okay. But a three-point cut is doing, a, so if you have a really heavy branch, and you start cutting like this, the branch is going to, with the weight, it's oh. going to tear into the stem. Sure. So what we want to do is we want to make a three-point cut, which is starts with an undercut. So I'll just do it, even mm -hmm. though we don't have to for this one. We'll just do it. We do yep. an undercut like this, and that separates those fibers underneath. And then we do an overcut like this to just um, remove the weight of the branch. Okay. And then so we can cast that aside. Sure. And then we have a little stub here, and then we just make a good pruning cut. Again, you can see the branch collar and the branch bark ridge here. You want to keep that intact uh -huh. and make a pruning cut like this. She may be little, but she's mighty. There you go. It doesn't take a lot of a lot of strength to do it, and when they're small, it's easy to do. And a, a pruning cut should be a perfect circle. 
It should not be a football shape. It, sh it shouldn't be oblong. It should be round. You had mentioned to me one of the other things was that uh, with a crab apple, you can cut it at yeah. any time. You can right. prune it at any time. Yes. That is different yep. than most other trees. Well, or is it? it is. So most other trees, um, most other most trees can be pruned any time. But the trees that can't be are oaks and elms. Uh -huh. um, and usually we think about fruit trees, maybe like productive fruit trees, like apples and peaches and stuff. We like to prune those in the dormant season too. But um, it's not really, uh, it's, it's not a big deal. Oh. So we can go ahead and prune. We say, just prune when your budget allows. That's awesome to know. Yeah. Uh, and right now, Faith and I are going to move over to a century oak tree.